we're going to talk about how the Arduino toolchain converts instructions you type into the text editor into machine language the microcontroller can understand. A tool chain is simply a set of software tools that work together to complete a task. So if I were going to hang a picture, for example, the tool chain might include a hammer, maybe a tape measure, and some nails. When programming the Arduino, or anything else, it is possible to write some pretty complex instructions and get the Arduino to do some really cool things. The problem is that a microcontroller, like the AT Mega 328 on the Uno, can only execute simple, low-level instructions. These simple instructions include things like add variable A to variable B, or take variable B and put it in register X. And to complicate matters, microcontrollers only speak in binary. For those who don't know, binary numbers are long strings of ones and zeros. Maybe we'll talk more about binary numbers another time. The statement here may make total sense to you if you've been working with Arduino for a while, or if not, it may not make any sense at all. Either way, just go with me here for a minute. This is just an illustration which does not require complete understanding of the code. So how does a complex statement like this one actually run on a microcontroller that only knows basic arithmetic, logic, moving, and shifting? How do these statements translate into the ones and zeros that the microcontroller can actually understand? Glad you asked. No, really, I am. This is what we're going to answer now. Microcontrollers are electronic devices. So to speak to one, you need to send electronic signals. That's where binary numbers come into play. A zero represents low or off, usually zero volts or close to it, while a one represents high or on, usually either 5 volts or 3.3 volts depending on the processor. A good way to think of binary numbers and digital signals is like a single pole light switch in your house. The light is either on or it's off. There's nothing in between. A zero is off and a one is on. Going from complex instructions to simple ones the microcontroller understands requires several layers of software that translate the high-level operations into simpler instructions. Enter the compiler. Compiling a program in Arduino is referred to as verifying. The terms mean the same thing, so throughout these tutorials we'll use them interchangeably. Now the compiler first transforms the code you write into assembly language. The name of the compiler we'll be using on our Uno is AVRGCC. Now if you're new to this, this may sound kind of weird, but try not to get too hung up on it. It's just a name. The assembler which is built into the IDE with the compiler, then translates the assembly language program into machine language. It creates object files which combine machine language, data, and information it needs to place instructions properly in memory. Often the assembler creates multiple files which need to be put together. This is where the linker, another part of the compiler software package, shines. The linker will take all the independently assembled machine language programs and object files and put them together. This produces a .hex file that the microprocessor can understand and run. Now this figure, though it applies to C and C++ programming in general, is a good illustration of this process. Another piece of software called AVRDUDE, and DUDE is for downloader, uploader, starts when we press the upload button in the Arduino IDE. Now this software sends the .hex file to the ATmega328 on the Arduino board. On the chip resides what's known as a bootloader. This bootloader was put there on purpose by the folks at Arduino and works with AVRDU to get the .hex file into the flash memory on the chip. And all this happens very quickly and seamlessly behind the scenes of the Arduino IDE. Now, a few words are in order on this subject due to the enormous popularity of Arduino boards and the C and C++ language in general. Some of you use standalone or naked microcontrollers for your projects. After all, this is how things are actually made and mass produced in the real world. And it's cheaper. We talked about naked or standalone microcontrollers versus Arduino in an earlier tutorial. Others use platforms or ecosystems such as the Arduino almost or entirely exclusively. Finally, some of you may use both depending on your goals and background. For hobbyists, the number of people who use platforms like Arduino has exceeded those who use only naked microcontrollers. When we talk about programming the Arduino, we'll talk about the C and C++ languages, but the truth is, sketches are written in a language similar to C, though a sketch itself is not completely compatible with C. In Arduino, for example, the main function is hidden from view and added for you when you compile or verify your sketch. Also, there are two functions which the Arduino ecosystem absolutely requires, setup and loop. The only function C requires is main. 
C also lacks built-in functions for using microcontroller I.O., such as digital writes. To make learning simple, the Arduino IDE designers hide a lot of detail and functionality behind layers of abstraction, many of which come in the form of libraries. Note that the C programming language also uses libraries. They are added during the linking process. Though there are a few slight differences, if you can become a competent C programmer, you'll also master the Arduino IDE and crush it on your Arduino projects. And if you desire to port the code from Arduino to a naked micro, it'll be a cinch.